in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed We see the rain of your love We see the wind of your spirit Now the heartbeat of heaven Let us hear We see the rain of your love we see the wind of your spirit Now the heartbeat of heaven Let us hear so let it rain let it rain open the flood gates of heaven let it Please ask the Lord for an encounter tonight. Lord, open my eyes and give me a destiny altering encounter, even by your spirit. Is someone praying? The Bible says, Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Holy, holy. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Father, we bless you from everlasting to everlasting. 
may your name be praised and exalted even in our midst we have come tonight to hear you speak we have come to be transformed we have come to encounter your word and even your spirit visit us tonight give us encounters that last in the name of Jesus I pray in the name of Jesus we pray God bless you please be seated God bless you be seated glory be to the name of the Lord for giving us another opportunity to be changed to be lifted the Bible says they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the Lord in Zion not as many who desire strength those who appear before the Lord in Zion may God take us from glory to glory Amen. hallelujah Amen. the house of God is among many other things the house of God is a place of spiritual illumination please listen is a place of revelation the assignment of revelation is to empower are we together now yes empowerment in this kingdom comes on account of light if you lack spiritual illumination you will not be able to be empowered nor will you be able to rise the Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter even unto the perfect day so every time we're gathered before God it is important for us to know that this is not just a cinema where you come to watch a movie this is not a theater where you come to watch performance this is God in the midst of his people coming through his word to change to transform to heal to deliver and to lift that means at the time you were saying may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ a wiser you should be the one speaking a more empowered you should be the one speaking a more audacious you should be the one speaking a more enlightened you you cannot be the same person who prayed the opening prayer and then shares the grace it means that God did not do anything in your life hallelujah and tonight will be no different in Jesus name praise the name of the Lord um, I want to specially appreciate all the workers in this house I just I just thought to do this very sincerely hallelujah um, leading a large ministry like this requires more than being anointed you must have willing hands willing hearts you cannot imagine the things that happen to make every koinonia service a wonderful experience and I want to thank every worker in this house when we were coming and you know I saw our security people you know in the rain happily moving around you know I, I just thought I said it has to be the love of God that constrains a man this way now this is not just leadership tradition I mean it from the depth of my heart I have taught you here that not everybody thinks you are a big deal I hope you still remember that teaching not everybody thinks you are that important or deserving of their commitment and their participation and if and when you do find people who can inconvenience themselves and bend over backwards you must have the discernment the humility and the unashamedness to celebrate them and recognize them as many times as possible so again thank you thank you very much all the workers leaders the Lord bless you and honor you in the name of Jesus hallelujah I celebrate everyone who has come especially for those who have come from outside this nation and outside this city thank you very much you will never be the same in Jesus name particularly I want to thank 
just a few very special people first is reverend joshua tende and his dear wife may god bless you sir all the way from father's delight in zaria let's honor them very marvelous man of god thank you sir such an honor to have you around praise the name of the lord i'm also told that we have in our midst general bindu and his wife am i right on that please let's honor him and give him a big god bless you wherever you are sir you are blessed and we honor you oh please give him a big god bless you general thank you so much all the way from jaji the lord bless and honor you thank you for coming please be seated hallelujah tonight's teaching will be a cure for inconsistencies tonight's teaching will be a cure for compromises of standards tonight's teaching will produce predictability and sustainability to your results in the name of jesus christ striving for mastery part three we're looking tonight at the power of systems and structures striving for mastery for those of you who are just joining us uh, for the first time whether online or here on site we've been um, dealing with a series of teachings even though we took a two-week break to do the miracle service and then um, respond to the matters of the time but now we're back to finish it up striving for mastery this is a three-part series intended to empower us the goal of this series is to make our christian experience richer and to make our results predictable it is god's desire that we move past the realm of shadow boxing and the realm of trial and error to a point where we can lay hold of eternal life and we'll be able to communicate the things of the spirit with precision with clarity and then command results that bring glory to the name of the lord part one we looked at the foundation where we considered the spirituality of life please pay attention we said how that life and living is spiritual in its entirety the bible does not leave us in the dark as to the fact that this visible realm came out from the invisible realm hebrews chapter 11 one to three says now faith is calls it the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen verse 2 says for by it that faith the elders obtained a good report verse 3 gives us that information it says through faith we understand we were not there but there is an information that has come and we believe through faith that the walls were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear hallelujah even when Jesus manifested the Bible calls him the express image of the invisible God so the realm of the spirit controls the physical realm we said that also that the realm of the spirit governs the physical realm the physical realm is helplessly a slave to the realm of the spirit that when you want to adjust realities your point of reference becomes the realm of the spirit first in order of priority according to second corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18 the bible says second corinthians 4 and verse 18 while we look not at the things which are seen but the things which are not seen so there are things that are seen and things which are unseen and the bible says both of them are realities just because it is unseen does not mean it is unreal hallelujah because the bible says you can look at it there is substance even to that which is unseen it says for the things which are seen are temporal it means they are subject to change under a certain condition but the things which are not seen are long-lasting or eternal and then we looked at a few keys that would help us um, maximize 
the spirituality of life we looked at the ministry of prayer and then we said we have to understand and engage the laws and the principles of the kingdom part two was basically the laws of dominion we said that dominion in this kingdom is a resultant effect of your knowing and comprehending the ways of God that there is a relationship between the ways of God and the glory of God remember the teaching Exodus chapter 33 and verse 13 Moses prayed and said God show me now thy way then verse 18 he now said show me your glory so there is a relationship between his ways and his glory when you know and understand his ways inevitably you will experience his glory Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6 the Lord commanded Moses that there is always something that you should do and the glory of the Lord shall appear it will not just appear because you desire it there is what you must do for the glory to appear and we looked at a number of laws number one was the law of total surrender number two was the law of mental transformation number three was the law of value and contribution number four we looked at the law of authority number five we looked at the law of faith number six we looked at i hope i'm right on this we looked at the law of relationships number seven we looked at the law of honor then we looked at the law of favor and then finally we looked at the law of spiritual empowerment why do you need to know this because they are keys these are the keys that make for dominion it is impossible to trade these kingdom secrets and remain small and remain an amateur in spiritual things these are the laws that help us to contend for mastery remember second timothy chapter 2 and verse 5 the bible says he that strives for masteries is not crowned except he strives lawfully so if you want your christian experience and your results to be predictable these are the spiritual laws that work behind the scenes to produce an enviable life and an enviable destiny part three today we'll be looking at the power of systems and structures i plead with you in the name of jesus that you open up your spirit because what you're about to learn will change your life in a way that probably you are not prepared for may the lord grant us understanding in jesus name ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 10 ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 10 the bible says if the iron be blunt and he do not wet the edge that means to sharpen it it says then must he put more strength but wisdom is profitable in that it sustains the ability to direct I have said it here that truth in itself does not bless arbitrarily just because you are in the presence of the truth and just because you have the truth does not mean you will be changed by it that truth that is randomly communicated will not produce growth and stature in the believer for truth to profit you it has to be communicated holistically and then number two it has to be arranged sequentially because the believer is likened to a spiritual house and if you ask any architect and any builder all of the materials we see here are required in building the house but they are not all required at the same time and they are not all required in the same quantity am i right on that another analogy the chef you bring a chef and tell him list all of the ingredients that will be needed to produce this meal he will list all of them and he can even give you that is truth but you will not be able to produce that meal why because you must be taught the combination there are certain ingredients that you have to apply when the food is already off 
you know the fire or whatever it is there are the ingredients that you need to start the process there are others if you miss the timing or you miss the quantity you cannot put say for a plate of rice the same quantity of rice and the same quantity of salt both of them are needed but not to the same degree so it takes it takes the mastery of a chef to communicate truth to God's people in a way that builds and edifies Paul called himself a wise master builder are we together so just because you have access to truth does not mean you will be able to produce results with it I can give you bags of cement I can give you blocks I can give you a few metals I can give you all kinds of things and you will stand there looking at the tools that can build you a house and yet not be able to build a house because it takes skill are we together write this down please God is a God of systems and structures God is a God of systems and structures this is a very important aspect of God that will be useful for our discussion tonight that God is a God of systems and structures what does that mean that means look up please that every time God builds he builds with the intention to allow what he built continue are we together without him having to come and build it again we see that in the book of the beginnings Genesis the Bible tells us that when he made the trees he put capacity in them to have the seed that will keep reproducing again is that true God will seldom start a process and come back and do it again you will hardly find the same miracle happening twice in the Bible God will initiate that process and create a system around that process so that any day you want to see that result you find out the system that makes for that reproduction are we together now there are many people who do not understand the systems of God and yet they want to be able to reproduce results again and again and again the realm of mastery is a realm of systems and structures it was God's servant Bishop Oedipo that said you walk by common sense he said you run by principles but you fly by instructions you see the difference you just need common sense to walk then you need principles to run but if it has to do with flight you need instructions that direct you methodically Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 1 Ezekiel 37 the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley that was full of bones verse 2 he caused me to pass by them round about and behold the Bible says there were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry please look up now we see a picture of chaos we see a picture of death we see a picture of decadence are we together now Ezekiel is giving us the privilege to share of his vision and he's saying he's taken to a valley of dry bones in the spirit and among the many things that he sees there are just bones and one important information is that those bones were scattered no life no order there was disarray and chaos the Bible says they were very dry meaning they had been in that condition for a long time how many of you know that if you see dry bones around it means that a bone means there was once a human a human bone now is that true but something happened to those people and they began to deteriorate until it became that experience that Ezekiel was seeing verse 3 we're reading to 7 the full text is to 14 but we may just stop at 7 and he said unto me son of man can these bones live please look up was it the bones that God was interested in from this story no he was interested in the full army but notice for a long time his emphasis was on the bones 
because he knew that if something did not happen to the bones that army would not come back his intention was to have a robust army but his first port of call was the bones that life was even useless until the bones were in place hmm. can these bones leave not can these men leave the goal was to have the men alive but he needed to deal with the issue of the bones and i answered O lord god thou knowest verse 4 he said unto me prophesy again unto the bones and say unto them O ye dry bones hear ye the word of the lord verse 5 thus saith the lord god unto these bones behold i will cause breath to enter into you and you shall leave verse 6 now and i will lay sinews upon you and will bring up flesh upon you upon what the bone that is now alive breath came into the bones and now flesh and other things can come to cover it he says and put breath in you and ye shall live and ye shall know that i am the lord i am the lord verse 7 so i prophesied as i was commanded and as i prophesied there was a noise and behold a shaking this is the part i like and the bones came together it would have stopped there but the bible says bone to his bone say systems bone to his bone because it was not the coming together of the bones that was the issue it was that they had to be arranged accurately and the bible did not leave us in the dark for that army to be formidable and for life to be profitable in those humans the bones had to look for their places of assignment and stay there bone to his bone There are many believers as individuals, as organizations, as churches who downplay the power of systems and structures in being able to effectively live, number one, and then effectively communicate the purposes of the kingdom. As far as gaining mastery is concerned, we have downplayed this and made it look like it is not a spiritual issue after all we say if my relationship with the lord jesus christ is important and i pursue that one every other thing will happen and it is not so you will be learning right now that every aspect of your life the continuity of every aspect of your life and the efficiency depends on your ability to build systems and structures around it if you're with me say amen. amen let's do a few definitions please write this down what is a system a system I'll give you two definitions very quickly then I'll begin to teach there's so much for us to learn May God will grant us grace a system is a set of elements please write let's hurry up a system is a set of elements or components that are organized for a common purpose i'll take it again a system is a set of elements or components that are organized for a common purpose a set of elements or components that are organized for a common purpose second definition a system is a set of principles or procedures please write let me allow you write and then i finish it a system is a set of principles or procedures according to which something is done a system is a set of principles or procedures according to which something is done a set of principles or procedures according to which something is done it is also called an organized approach a system is an organized approach so that's the definition of a system when we talk about a system in one sentence we mean an organized approach of doing something or to doing something what is a structure a structure comes from the Latin word structura. 
S-T-R-U-C-T-U-R-A, structura, which means to fit together or to build. I'm being very simple because I want all of us to understand. The word structura, the Latin expression for structure, it means to fit together. It means to build. So what is the definition of structure now? It means the way in which parts of a system are arranged. My apologies for rushing you. Structure means the way in which parts of a system are arranged. The way in which parts of a system are arranged. So systems talk about execution strategies while structures talk of build up or leadership strategies when you talk of systems it means an approach how things are done but when you talk of structures you mean how things are built systems talk of execution structures talk of organization the way things are built is god helping us please write this down no growth process or result is sustainable until and unless it is systematized very powerful information no growth process or result whether spiritually and otherwise no growth process or result is sustainable until and unless it is systematized that means whatever you are doing provided you have not systematized it there is no sustainability there the longevity factor in everything we do is the system that is built around it no growth process or result is sustainable until and unless it is systematized please write this down to systematize means to make the outcome predictable by generating a formula. To systematize means to make the outcome predictable by generating a formula. Be patient with my definitions and then I'll begin to teach. To systematize means to make the outcome predictable by generating a formula or creating an approach so you systematize anything because you want to make the outcome predictable and you do that by generating a formula or creating an approach very very powerful please look up this gentleman is playing this keyboard right here come he stopped playing what happened to the sound it stopped why did it stop because it was built that there are keys you touch to produce that outcome is that true go back and continue what you're doing everybody listen very carefully you're about to hear a sound now remember demons are still on earth and yet the sound was not stopped do you know why because the intelligence that built this programs a system the owner who the owner the those who designed this the yamaha company they do not even know that there is a ministry using their product right now and their presence does not have to be here for it to work the system immortalizes their presence so that they don't have to come here it brings predictability that everywhere on earth this product is being used under the same condition it will produce the same result There's rain falling and for those of us in Nigeria here and many parts of Africa, this is the rainy season and we're having rains and enjoying the showers of blessings. Did you know that there are other parts of the world who people are enjoying the same thing right now simply because a system was created? Is that true? The moment you do not systematize any operation around your life, inconsistencies 
and compromises will be inevitable the staying power and the ability to stay true to your formula to stay true to your modus operandi depends on your systematizing whatever you are doing please pay very close attention what are the advantage of systems let's look at the advantage of systems and structures let me just talk on that and get it out of the way then we'll now begin to deal with these issues you will be surprised for many of you this teaching tonight is going to be answering your prayer while your spiritual life will be up today and down tomorrow your prayer life up today down tomorrow it looks like you are carrying the power of god you know even for a preacher you find out that you do well in a season then you do not do well again because there is the absence of systems and structures when there are no systems and structures in your life you will freelance everything your emotions will govern anything you are doing and emotions vacillate you will not be able to produce consistency let's look at the advantage of systems what are the advantages of systems i will give you five very quickly please write patiently write number one systems make it possible for everyone who engages them to have the same or similar effect i'll come again systems make it possible for everyone who engages them to have the same or similar results systems make it possible for everyone who engages them to have the same or similar results amazing isn't it this beautiful structure right here can be reproduced anywhere in the world where there is land and you don't need to carry this building and, and move with it all you need to do is carry the architectural plan is that true you can even give an architect who has never seen this and he will so reproduce it with digital precision to a point that you can lie down here to sleep and they relocate you to another kind of this you will wake up thinking you are where you left because of consistency of systems how many of you have seen estates where people build and you can see hundred buildings looking the same the power of systems systems make it possible for everyone who engages them to have the same or similar results isn't that powerful for instance the system allocated for salvation right now we are here listening to god speak to us there is a crusade going on somewhere across the globe and anyone who engages that system the bible says for with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation even if it is in a hole a plane on land in the belly of the fish wherever you engage this system salvation becomes yours are we together that makes it possible for the nigerian the american the european the asian anyone at all can receive jesus the moment you subscribe to the system that the administration of eternal life was connected to imagine with me if everybody in the world had to see me to be saved do you know how many people will go to hell god is too loving to create that kind of risk that means the day i don't feel like waking up people will go to hell that day because i'm tired or because my emotions were not at their best and so he created a system that even when there is no man to get the person born again the holy spirit can lead that man to engage that system and alone in the room you will still be saved ah powerful do you know why i'm saying this because some of you by reason of what you are hearing tonight there are results you've only read about this knowledge is about to ship it from the book you read and make it happen in your life or from the life you saw happen the same way you saw the anointing flow the same way you saw wisdom flow the same way you saw the organization build if you can understand the system you can reproduce the result so systems make it possible for everyone who engages them to have the same or similar effect number two very quickly 
systems and structures minimize biases and sentiments this is very powerful systems and structures minimize biases and sentiments God put systems there to minimize biases and sentiments if results depended on biases and sentiments then there are certain people who may never have it for instance Africa for instance certain well-intentioned believers but thank God that everything that has to do with the kingdom in as much as there is God there that supervises it he made it systemic so that biases and sentiments would not interrupt our rising to mastery number three systems and structures guarantee sustainability or longevity of results that's a very important advantage systems and structures guarantee sustainability and longevity of results we don't have so much of those buildings in nigeria sadly but when you travel to the u.s or you travel to europe you will see buildings and structures that are 200 300 years old is that true and they are still standing solid because those who built them did not build them to collapse after two years at the back of the builders the builders designed that that structure would outlive them and you can still see people buying those homes a 150 year old house and someone is buying it not as a as an artifact to say okay this is i am the owner of this come and see for tourism he, he intends to live there there may be a few adjustments that will be made there but it will still be there you go to israel for pilgrimage and you find out that there are many things that you would see that have been preserved in almost their original state systems guarantee sustainability i don't know the oldest business in nigeria respectfully speaking i don't know the oldest organization in this nation but there are organizations across the globe including ministries that they will tell you they are so 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 and so years old great grandfather handed it over to father or grandfather grandfather handed it over to father father has now handed it over to son and you know great grandson and so on and so forth and they are still running it with the level of excellence some of you buy certain products and you see written on it established 18 or 1907 and yet you are still consuming that product everyone who made that product and was part of it foundationally must have transited and yet you are enjoying the product systems and structures guarantee sustainability and longevity of results that includes your spiritual life that includes your finances that includes every other aspect of your life number four is God speaking to someone already number four systems and structures make replication possible this is a powerful information systems and structures make replication or reproduction possible you can replicate any result when you make it systemic systems and structures make replication possible for instance the lord jesus christ the early church and us today hallelujah we were not there when he died we were not there when he rose but there was a system that he designed and we are beneficiaries of that system to the point that by the election of grace we can stand today and do the same thing paul did we can stand today and preach like jesus preached and see the results jesus saw preach like paul preached and see the result preach like like reinhard bonke preached preach like tl osborne and all these people we may never have met them as individuals but even when they left the system was still here very powerful the last advantage systems and structures now listen carefully systems and structures
provide a basis for commendation, correction, promotion, and demotion without biases or emotional interference. Be patient and I'll read it. You have to get it. That systems and structures provide a basis for commendation, they provide a basis for rebuke or correction. They provide a basis for promotion. And they provide a basis for demotion without biases or emotional interference. This is powerful. The presence of systems and structures can legitimize you commending someone or an organization, can legitimize you rebuking or correcting can legitimize you promoting an individual or even demoting an individual without biases and without sentiments. This is true for individuals and this is true for organizations. Please look up. Even in our work with God, God does not commend emotionally. God does not correct emotionally. God does not promote emotionally. God does not demote emotionally. There is always a basis for everything he does. When you look at the seven churches in the book of Revelation, every commendation was based on something. Every rebuke was based on a standard. If there is no reference, there is no basis for commending or rebuking. Listen, if you do not operate by systems and structures, there will be too much bias in your operation. Tribalism will destroy you. Gender sensitiveness will destroy you. And all kinds of needless biases will ruin your life and even ruin your organization. Now, please hear me. Positive compromises only become profitable when the structure and the standard is in place. There will always be positive compromises, but they are useless unless and until there are standards in place. Is someone learning? How do I know I am wrong? How do I know I am right? How do I know I am due for promotion? And when you demote me, how do I know you are justified? except and unless there are systems and structures there are many leaders in this nation respectfully speaking there are many men of god there are many leaders in various areas who do these four things they commend without a reference they rebuke and correct without a reference they promote without a reference and they demote without a reference it is as i like no, you cannot build anything great with those kinds of sentiments. The, many of you here are legal practitioners. When you go to the court of law, when they say an offender or whatever, or even if you are commending someone, based on this and that, they will read it for you. Based on this and that, the constitution of Nigeria or whatever it is, there is a compendium of the modus operandi of the citizens within a country and they will tell you based on this 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 you have violated a b c and now the judge will now met the punishment there are there are certain things called tampering justice with mercy am i right and then there is what they call soft landing but at least the the standard is there before god showed us his mercy and grace he opened us up to see that listen Based on my justice, you fell. However, my mercy is there and my grace is there. We couldn't have appreciated his mercy and his grace until and unless he gave us an opportunity to see how bad we fell. Are we together? There are businesses today where you see someone from a cleaner is automatically promoted to become a manager. And I believe in favor, I have taught you. But from, from a leadership standpoint, you ask the CEO and say, based on what? The person will say, he made me happy. Not knowing that that cleaner was only happy because he was poor and broke. He has not become the version that will hurt you. And then the next thing, as a, as a CEO now, the potential that was locked up in him now begins to be revealed. There are many needless battles. There are many pains that are uncalled for simply because people did not systematize their lives 
double standards of dealing with your life double standards of leading in an organization why because it is not systemic please look up god who is love god who is love created hellfire and gave everybody an opportunity that even at the, the detriment of your eternal destiny god will still respect you if you honor or violate the system god who is love and god who is merciful there are people today in hell because they willingly chose can you imagine that systems and structures no wonder the bible says i said before you this day blessing and cursed is it in your bible i said before you this day life and death but i advise you that you choose life that you and your seed may leave write this down for an individual for an individual you must create two kinds of systems around your life basically for an individual you must create two kinds of systems in your life basically number one a value system or what we call a code of conduct and number two an operational guide based on your convictions and priorities i'll take it again for an individual that means if you desire to excel to last to thrive to gain mastery you must create two kinds of systems in your life number one a value system or what we call a code of conduct number two you must create an operational guide that means a modus operandi a modus operandi just means how things are done that are based on your convictions and based on your priorities the bible says a man who does not have a watch over his spirit is like a city without walls please look at me if you must excel as an individual and rise in every area and dimension of your life then you must be prepared to know that living emotionally especially in this day is a risk i repeat living just based on emotions and sentiments will at best leave you an average person or a defeated fellow even spiritually you must be able to create a code of conduct or an operational guide that is based on your convictions and your priorities if your conviction is scripture then you must build it to be referenced to scripture you must create a value system or code of conduct and then an operational guide for your life now write this down for an organization an organization means a church a business an ngo whatever kind of corporate platform write this down please you must create a compendium you must create a compendium of the systems and the modus operandi that run the organization and use it to train your staff your workforce your membership and so on and so forth for an organization you must create a compendium of the systems and the modus operandi that run that organization that means everybody within that organization should understand the systems that function there and they should understand the modus operandi how things are done there you use that compendium to train your staff you use it to train your workforce you even use it to train your membership hallelujah now if imagine with me for a moment please look up imagine with me that this mic goes off I'm unable to get it powered so that I speak and everybody who loves me and want to hear the gospel just runs and comes to help me put on the mic what do you have chaos is that true there must be a system that defines who does what 
so that if sound goes off you don't have to be blamed for the carelessness of someone you see one of the blessings of systems is that everybody cannot be blamed for the carelessness of one person you are able to allocate responsibilities and allocate commendations accordingly you must be able to build this now please write this down well this is this is really the heart of our discussion right now how to build formidable systems and structures i want to teach you something very powerful then we'll now come to our lives striving for mastery part three the power of systems and structures please look up how to build formidable systems and structures haven't told you all of these things what systems and structures are and the advantages that they provide in the life of an individual and even an organization it is important for you to know how to build formidable systems and structures there are there are six questions that everybody must answer this night if you want to build a system and a structure in your life and in your organization it is important to answer these questions let's deal with them very quickly number one the first question that everybody must be able to answer if you desire to build a formidable system and a structure around your life is number one why do i exist the question of vision the question of the goal that is to be achieved the knowledge of the end product you cannot build effective systems around your life if you cannot answer the question of vision why do i exist as a person as far as god's divine plan is concerned why do we exist as an organization there must be a clear definition of your vision there must be a clear definition of the goal to be achieved there must be a clear definition of the end product is someone learning please look up it is difficult to systematize anything if you do not know why it exists when jesus showed up he gave us his manifesto in clear terms in fact his name his very name captured his manifesto jesus jehoshua the one who saves that salvation to seek and to save the lost was his primary goal he also added to us that he came as a correction of our idea about god that everything we thought god is or god was jesus came as a marking script so that we will look at his life and begin to edit our understanding about god that was told us by the prophets and by the law how many of us here can tell me with precision why your organization exists what vision it is pursuing now what goal it seeks to achieve what is the end product man of god i know you are praying and fasting but can you tell me what you are trusting god to become do you know that many people do not have an idea of what the end product is so there are several activities that are leading nowhere are you learning now there are many people today respectfully speaking who do not excel in ministry because the ministry has no known vision the ministry does not have any goal the ministry does not have even an end product as a man of god when you teach and mentor people in a church like this you must have an idea of the back end of your mentorship what should they become beloved people please look at me how many of you will go to a school or send your children to a school whose end you do not know imagine a lecturer coming into a class and seeing several people and saying well i am professor this or doctor this i am here to teach you and the students have no idea no reference as to what they should become can i tell you knowing the end product gives you the power to endure you cannot indefinitely stay, receive the staying power to become nothing 
who for the joy that was set before him is it in your bible he endured the cross and he despised the shame there must be a clear definition of your vision a vision for your life a goal to be achieved so god has called you into ministry hallelujah what has he given you what is what is the end product what do you see yourself becoming you must answer that question there are many businesses today that just happened because of hunger there was no vision so the, the business cannot even last more than one year because the motivation was not anything long term the man was hungry and he was just told that look if you at least do something exchange value you will get something to eat it is a risk to start moving without knowing where you are going imagine with me ladies and gentlemen that you stop and an, a bolt or uber or any of the transport systems you have around and then you tell the man take me to so 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 place do you know it the man says yes and then he begins to fire running like he's been pursued by police and then he's taking you somewhere you don't know where you are going so you were banking on his knowledge and later on he would confess to you that sincerely i forgot to tell you this is my first day at work i just came into abuja last week would you clap for such a person and say wow you are you are such an in let's keep going now hold on is there a problem with motion is there a problem with activity is there a problem with speed and yet there is no arrival in the presence of motion in the presence of activity even in the presence of speed without vision you will not arrive is someone hearing what i'm saying now yes that is the reason why you give meetings names so that those who come for the meetings have an idea of what to expect if you say you are coming for a city-wide crusade all those who come they know what to expect if you call it a crusade don't blame me for bringing someone on a wheelchair don't blame me for carrying a dead child and coming with the person you call it a crusade there are things that should happen in a crusade ground imagine with me that we call a meeting a crusade and as soon as people come for instance and respectfully speaking i'm teaching you five keys to prosperity that is not wrong but that is wrong for the name given to that meeting a crusade targets the salvation of sinners and then at best the strengthening of believers within a territory hallelujah you must answer the question of vision there are many of you you want to be men of god if i ask you why say there's something boiling in my heart i just know that i'm supposed to be doing this that is good but not enough motivation not enough to stand in the midst of all the things that befall you as you serve God who for the joy that was set before you endured the cross despised the shame number two is God helping us the second question you must ask tonight if you want to build systems and structures in your life is who are the beneficiaries of my solutions very powerful question you want to build a system around your life that helps you produce impact who are the beneficiaries of my solutions don't say i am sent to everybody potentially yes but who are the beneficiaries of my solution jesus himself when he came he said he was here to seek and save the lost that means if the father had found you he didn't have a ministry for you to seek and to save the lost there are many of us here you do not know those who have been mandated to be the beneficiaries of your solutions as a man of god you do not even know those you are sent to as a businessman you do not even understand your clientele you have to know those you were sent to when moses had an encounter with god god did not say moses take this rod roam around anywhere you see human beings just tell them you have met the god of the bible watch this the nature of his training was with respect to where he would be sent to is someone is someone learning now yes 
Moses, I am sending you to Egypt. Here is your mandate. Deliver them from the hand of Pharaoh. Take them out of Egypt into a land flowing with milk and honey. Precision. And to meet Pharaoh, I would have to train you. Very powerful. Who are the beneficiaries of your solutions? Can I tell you? Every mandate and any call, whether in ministry, whether in business, there, there are targeted beneficiaries that you must understand. It can be an age range, it can be a vision, it can be a gender. You have to know your clientele. I know those God has sent me to. Every time I see people who need encounters and revival in their life, every time I see people who have gone down spiritually, you are calling for my attention. Every time I see someone who has not been saved, you have not encountered Jesus, you are calling for my attention. Every time I see someone who is spiritually down, there is no fervency, no fire, no appetite for spiritual things, you are calling for my attention. Everywhere I see demons oppressing people, you are calling for my attention. Don't invite me me just show me someone oppressed that is my invitation based on the mandate show me someone who is sick that needs a demonstration of the power of God show me a territory that needs revival and fire you are calling me question what calls you there are many people who do not know what calls them what calls you for some of you you have been raised as kingdom financiers that everywhere you see poverty and lack and the house of God suffering, something should call you. But you are not able to create any system to be excellent. Why? God cannot even use you to be a kingdom financier because you do not know the beneficiaries of your solution. Don't downplay what you are hearing. We have a lot of politicians here. When they make you a house member, you are not a house member of Nigeria. You are not a house member or a senator they, they 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 define a region is that true and your your assignment principally is to that region who are the beneficiaries of my solutions so that you can invest your time not knowing this will help you, will make you build wrong systems. You are going to be ministering to people you are not gifted for, people you are not graced towards. Are we together now? Very, very important. I sing. I'm not ignorant as far as music is concerned. I was once a music director, but my call is not to be a worship minister to go to the nations. So I will sing, but I will sing while I am preaching. There is nobody who has invited me to come and sing a special number. Yet if you invite me, I must almost always sing. Why? Because that gift can find expression as a subset of the bigger picture. Are we together now? In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you sincerely from this night. May God lead you to find those who are the beneficiaries of your anointing. The beneficiaries of your call that that gift that he put within your spirit you must find those you are sent to please sit down man of god listen there are many people today who are genuinely called of god but they have not been able to identify those that god put the solution in them for there is, respectfully speaking, there, there is a ministry called the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship. How many of you know that ministry? Now, do you know that that is a powerful ministry that has changed lives? The ministry came targeted to business people and people of influence because the, the founders discovered that it was difficult to minister to people of influence. So the whole idea is to evangelize people and keep them on fire for God and then to use their influence for kingdom come. That is what defines that ministry. You will not see full gospel businessmen having a deliverance service or going around um, having a crusade from city to city. But you will see them hold a meeting with only 30 people. And based on the definition of their ministry, they are highly successful. 
the blind pursuit for general results that creates competition creates frustration is because we have not defined there are businesses that do not have more than 100 clients yet they are billion naira and billion dollar businesses because the nature of the business it does not serve everybody is that true Who are the beneficiaries of my solutions question three is someone learning tonight question three are you ready what tools do i need this is powerful now i'm i'm answering questions that will help me build systems and structures around my life question three what tools do i need your tools talk about your skills your tools talk about your resources your tools talk about your relationships what skills will i need don't just create systems out of nothing what tools do i need please look up in this ministry for instance because of the nature of what god has called us to do we know that to be effective there are tools that we need and there are resources that we need. Are we together now? That is what birthed the structuring of every department. We know that there will be need for a media capture. And so there are media people who are walking all around as I'm speaking. We know that the nature of the ministry and the size of the ministry will necessitate a, a very intelligent security system at the highest level possible. And so there is every kind of security system imaginable put in place. You cannot create systems until you know the tools that you need. What do you need to succeed? There are some of you, can I tell you, what you need to succeed in your assignment is billions and billions and billions. That will now help you to know what to put in place. The kind of structures that will drive you. what tools do i need please look up if you are moses remember you need a rod never move until you find a rod if you are david don't stand before goliath until you have your sling and make sure there are five stones not an empty sling is someone speak is god speaking to someone here yes what tools do i need look up please if you are a man of god and you know that you need a high level anointing a high level manifestation of the power of god in your life then you see knowing that you need those tools you can now create a system that makes sure that your spiritual life never goes down because you need at every given point in your life the nature of your call will demand that you are on fire all the time to be instant in season and out of season number four are you ready the fourth question you have to ask and especially for organizations but then it also applies to your life is who does what the fourth question you must answer who does what distribution of tasks you will fail in life if you do everything most leaders fail in life because they cannot trust anybody who does what is a question you must ask as wonderful and great as this ministry is there are things i don't come close to you know why i rather do my work of oversight and allow those who are skilled and exceptional to do it i can play this keyboard you see but i cannot play this keyboard as effective as this person is playing i can play drums i can play most of the instruments here but I, I have not mastered to that level of efficiency and combining both of them will not make me efficient so there is a definition we are all on stage and we are all ministering but who does what husband who does what to avoid trouble wife who does what children who does what man of god who does what there has to be a proper definition of tasks 
I will never come for koinonia and cross my leg when it's time for the word. You see me come and I sit down quietly. The worship team doing their thing, testimonies, everyone doing their thing because I have my own slot in the program too. I can't get up arbitrarily and say, this is my ministry. All of you sit down. Even if I'm going to veto for a cause, I owe you an explanation to say the Holy Spirit came in and you will know this is an exception. I told you compromises only make sense when standards are in place. Now, please look up. I'm saying this respectfully. You know that I love the body of Christ. I'm teaching you and as many who would want to listen. There are many ministries and many organizations that do not have order because there is no definition of who does what. The man of God can do anything while it is while the service is going on you will see papers flying around sorry you are the one who is going to raise offering are you aware and the person said, i didn't prepare it's okay just use second corinthians chapter eight and nine or nine and eight and you see those discussions and the person comes up and he's looking confused and wondering hoping he's right and he says praise the lord hallelujah praise the lord and all kinds of things are happening and then finally you raise the offering and you don't know what to do there is no order three people will come and raise offerings and it's as if they, are, they were trained by three different people they don't know what to say no standards no systems can you let me tell you this systems should be greater than individuals so that it does not matter who is doing the work the result is the same an example is your car it does not matter whether it's the husband driving or the wife is driving because it is not them that define how the car moves a system there is the mechanics of the car are we together when you go to any of our banks across the globe you will almost find similar or the same experience yet they are sacking people and employing newer people do you know why they are not really concerned about the individuals because they know that the individuals will be immersed into a system that will limit their emotional interferences listen i'm teaching you this because this is how global brands spread they spread through systems so you can see apple kenya apple south africa apple nigeria apple uk individuals who may have never met themselves until and unless they're having an executive meeting and yet their results are similar you know why there is a common code that governs them when you call somebody a doctor say a consultant surgeon the person may be in abuja there may be another consultant surgeon in lagos another co consultant surgeon in adamawa three of them can literally meet the first time and meet inside a surgery room and none of them will be afraid of one another because there is a system that made them what they are how about the lecturers that teach students some of them talk fast some of them talk slow some of them look dull even though they are intelligent respectfully speaking some of them are very smart some of them have all kinds of temperaments but regardless the personality differences the students will still become what was desired because the system in this case the manual the modus operandi is greater than the personal biases of the lecturers do you know why i am sure that you will be nothing short of a sign and a wonder it is not because of the person standing before you this is it Mm. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way. I can still teach you, even though I don't know your background. I can still teach you, even though I know you may not have an advantage by default. Regardless the situation, this was built to survive and produce a champion out of everyone regardless the limitation if i teach you my opinions i will only teach those whose life and history is similar to mine and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise even unto salvation is god helping someone so who does what please look at me there are some of you the reason why you are inefficient in your life today right now as you're listening to me is because you are doing many things that your level of growth 
you are supposed to have outsourced those things and given other people there are some of you right now respectfully speaking with the level to which god has lifted you and helped you you should not be the one roaming around to wash your clothes the three hours you are spending washing your clothes by reason of your lifting now is a waste of time you will say it's humility i respect you but you are wasting time Do you understand what I'm teaching you now? Most of the efficient people in life, they write everything that they need to excel and begin to allocate responsibilities. This was what was killing Moses in the Bible. If you read, if you read, every time there is increase, you will have to shed off a lot of responsibilities and allot it to people you can trust so that you focus on the things that matter moses was wearing himself counseling people from morning till night and jethro his father-in-law said mr man you're about to kill yourself find people and set them as captains over hundreds thousands the same thing happened in acts chapter 6 the apostles were overseeing the sharing of food and there was a problem when you read from verse 1 among the Grecian women and all of that and the disciples said no 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 the apostles you are distracting us we are about a serious assignment right now it says look among yourself give it to us please now verse 2 or 3 it says look among yourselves seven men of honest report full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom whom we may appoint over this business it is business but not your business this business what is our own business verse 4 it says but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry let me tell you this please look up respectfully speaking there are many men of God whose spiritual fire has gone down and who fail woefully now as far as the ministry of the word is concerned because administrative duties have become a burden on them and they cannot trust anyone. Can I tell you, when you are overly afraid of everybody, the problem is you. You have to take the risk to trust people. How were you when God started using you? All of us are students in training and sometimes you have to stamp your feet and just risk it this is very powerful there are things in my life that I minimize I don't get myself involved with some of the brightest and the finest leaders globally speaking they minimize themselves to two three or four important tasks and they give their all to it there's a statement they used to say jack of all jack of all trades master of none it's true let me tell you the truth you cannot effectively lead a ministry like this if you are the one involved in checking the offering and finding out where it went to and then you quickly find out where the security people are and then while you are here you are looking there are things you cannot do your times of fasting your times of prayer do you know what it takes to prepare one series you can see some of the things i'm bringing those definitions did not come in the place of prayer. I studied. <laughs> of course, there are things that come in, but are you getting what I'm saying now? There is, there is, you cannot imagine. Believe me, I'm not exaggerating. The materials that I consult for one sermon, I preach an average of three sermons per week, aside from school of ministry and a lot of other things. You cannot have the time to do a lot of things and still excel. Please define who does what some of you have grown-up children in your house you are still washing your car you are still washing your clothes call those children and tell them to behave themselves well and this is not about abuse or bully this is about training even if you are prosperous if they cannot do anything they should follow you and learn so that the day you are not there the system is in place can I tell you hold on you know that something is wrong when the system collapses in your absence every time your absence creates such a big vacuum something was wrong with the systemic nature of yourself or your organization i used to say it when i was in zaria that even if i'm not there for one year the only thing that should be missed 
is the unique expression of the grace of God upon my life but it should not collapse if the ministry collapses there I failed woefully so if I don't come for koinonia for one month the only thing you should miss here is the unique expression of my grace not edification not growth if growth stops with my absence then I failed listen let me tell you this some of you God is speaking to you if you do not build systems around your life you will not be able to maximize destiny you will fail in many other areas of your life because many things will depend on you wrongly so dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny Alaska de Basca Nakata Branda Catecos, Cate Branda Catapaco Tosco to break a take a legata. The face of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.